energy surplus, gaining weight. So yesterday we had our first introduction into the calories in, calories out model. And we discussed how the calories in, if matched by the calories out, will keep us weight stable. Therefore, we'll stay the same. However, today we're going to be looking at an energy surplus or a caloric surplus, which is where our calories in is greater than our calories out. So the calories that we're consuming from diet is greater than the energy we are burning or expending. And this is going to lead to weight gain. And this is very, very prevalent. You know, nearly two thirds of the Western world um, are obese or overweight. And although some um, scientific studies that are printed in papers, very poor studies, um, certain views of people trying to sell you products, people don't become overweight for one single reason or event. It's often an insidious weight gain uh, in which people gain small amounts of weight each year. Um, and this gets exacerbated as we age because we tend to move around less, we tend to lose a bit of muscle mass, and we tend to gain a little bit more fat. But for most of us, the weight gain just tends to happen gradually, maybe one to two pounds over the course of a couple of months. But if you build that up over a year and over a number of years, we suddenly find ourselves in our 30s, our 40s, far larger than we'd like to be. And just to reiterate, and I'm going to show you a slide in a second that's kind of um, shows you all the, the, the kind of um, different contributors to, to weight gain, but it is multifactorial and underlying causes will differ from person to person. And the reason that one person is overweight, for example, somebody who um, always eats takeaways because they're stressed at work and they come home and drink lots of wine, might be different to somebody who was just brought up in a, an environment where food was always very plentiful. They're encouraged to never leave the food on their plate. Um, they don't prepare their food. You know? So basically, the reason that one person is overweight, while it will come down to an energy surplus, the reason they're eating in an energy surplus will be different from person to person. And the really interesting thing when it comes to this, and again, this is why we can't have blanket statement when it comes to diet, is that even if we think of the same person, they may have different reasons why they're overweight from time to time. So if we think when someone... Um, goes through a breakup sometimes or a stressful period, um, an emotionally taxing period, some people tend to emotionally eat and they consume large amounts of calories. However, once that emotional stress has been removed, then they may actually come back to eating in a more normal circumstance. So even the reason that people eat in an energy surplus, they eat more calories than they burn, may be different from time to time. So I've, I put this in here and I delib uh, deliberated with myself if I should do or not. But basically, I wanted to show you that there are a large number of reasons why certain people are overweight. And it isn't simply down to very simple things such as sugar or carbohydrates or um, not being able to detox. And then it's a very wide ranging, very complex issue. And we can see we've got everything from environmental factors to medical problems, maternal issues, um, economic, where you maybe you can't get access to certain foods. Um, the environment, and we'll talk far more about that throughout the rest of the course, psychological, as I touched on, and that kind of impact of emotional events for certain people, as well as social events. And we know that actually people tend to eat more in groups and there may be certain peer pressure to, you know, eat bad food. I'm sure some of us have all tried to diet before and someone's gone, you know, go on, go on, eat that piece of cake. It won't kill you. You know, you're not going to stick to that anyway. And so Hopefully you can see that there is a lot that goes into these contributing factors to why people overeat or they consume more calories than they burn. And that's why this course is 100 days and not 100 minutes. So this is just going over exactly what I just said. We can't demonize one single factor. It's completely short-sighted. And it has, as we said, a multifactorial contribution. Environmental pressures, biological, maternal, economic, food environment, psychological and social. So while the concept of eating less and moving more because eating less will lower my calories in and moving more will increase my calories out, it, whilst that is actually correct, it's like telling a drowning person to swim more and sink less. You know, it's just not helpful information. And that's why we need to spend time over this course to break this information down to help you to eat less and move more, but in the circumstance that you find yourself in. 
So this is just a quick look at kind of this insidious weight gain that I talked about. And we're going back to this graph that I represented um, yesterday. So here we can see that somebody is from Monday to Friday eating at 2,500 calories a day as represented by the black bars. And their maintenance requirement is 2,500 calories a day or 17,500 calories a week. So we can think of this as a person who pretty eats, eats pretty well from Monday to Friday. However, when the weekend comes in, they tend to let their hair down a little bit. They tend to enjoy a little bit more calorie-dense food. Maybe it's a little bit more dessert. Maybe it's a little bit more wine. And this causes them to overeat their normal calories by roughly 1,000 calories a day. And if we add up our week's total intake, we now have five days at 2,500 calories and two days at 3,500 calories, giving us a total intake of 19,500. And those of you that are relatively good at maths will be able to tell that your calories in is now greater than your calories out by roughly 2,000 calories. And we cover this later on in the course, but if we know that if we overeat by 3,500 calories per week, we will gain one pound of fat. So the person that eats in this way will gain roughly half a pound of fat over the course of each week. So their weight is going up because their calories in is greater than their calories out. And this can also be another reason why kind of big weekends prevent people from losing weight. So we see people dieting from Monday to Friday and they create what we call a calorie deficit. And we'll talk about this slightly more detail in the next lecture. But as you can see, the red line is telling me that I need 2,500 calories a week. However, Monday to Friday, I'm eating really well. I'm eating all the foods I should be, and I'm actually eating a little bit less than I normally should do. So I'm actually eating 2,000 calories a day. But when it gets to that weekend, and I let my hair down a little bit, those calories shoot right up. So now, even though my requirement is still 17,500, and I have five days at 2,000 calories, and two days at 3,500 calories, that gives me a total weekly intake of 17,000 calories. Therefore, Whilst it's only 500 calories, my calories in and ca calories out is pretty much matched. However, if I was to continue at this rate, I would lose one pound of fat in seven weeks. Now, for any of you that want to diet for seven weeks and feel like you're working hard Monday to Friday for seven weeks in total, only to lose one pound of fat, there's a good chance you're going to get demotivated and you're going to stop dieting. And Whilst it looks quite big, uh, that Saturday and Sunday, that graph on the uh, on the right-hand side, that's not somebody going out and eating McDonald's for breakfast and having KFC for lunch and going out for a restaurant meal. They are only quite small changes, but those two larger days on Saturday and Sunday can wipe out all the good work that we've done throughout Monday to Friday. So that was our brief look into calorie surplus.